chapter seven. We are going to talk about sales of assets, um, capital gains, and other sales of property. Remember, capital pro capital assets are investment property, and it could be personal property or it could be real estate. Could be personal property, could be real property, um, or personal use property. Personal use meaning your own personal stuff, right? Um, capital gains, those are that's capital property, those two things alone. Um, other sales of property, well, what we're referring to for other sales are sales of assets like business property, right? So a piece of equipment that you use in your business or a, a building that you use in your business or furniture that you use in your business, that sort of thing. So that would be other types of property. Now, complications come in with that because we depreciate that that type of property, right? We're depreciating, if it's a business property, piece of property, whether it's real estate, as long as it's not land, whether it's real estate or personal property, we're depreciating it if it's used for business. So in determining our gains and losses from that property, we've got to factor that into our calculations. So that's kind of one of the, um, one of the complications in doing all this stuff. There are other, things too that are a little bit tricky about these. The capital gains have some special rules attached to them. Um, there are special tax rates. There are special rules with regard to losses for capital assets. Um, so that's what we're gonna focus on in this chapter. Uh, learning objective one, we're gonna look at the terms that we need to define and look at the tax forms that are used in the sales of these property transactions, um, both capital property and uh, business property. We have three classifications of assets that are sold. We have also, in addition to the capital assets I just mentioned, which are called 1221 assets, this is where we have a lot of code sections that we're gonna talk about in here because they like to refer to these types of property by their code section. So don't get tripped up in that. Um, it's easy to get confused by it though. Capital assets are, and again, this refers to the, the section of the IRS code. 1221 assets, 1231 are those business assets. I just talked about those two, but then there's another classification of assets, which oftentimes kind of gets overlooked. These are ordinary assets. These are things, think about your balance sheet inventory accounts receivable are assets on your balance sheet well we sell inventory right so what is the treatment of that when we sell inventory accounts receivable as well is another type of asset that can't be sold um, and i'll talk a little bit about when that happens and and how the circumstances under which that happens um, so we're going to talk as well about how what our treatment is of the sale of those ordinary assets. Um, we'll go into more detail here on the ordinary assets. Uh, tax rules for recognizing <coughs> short-term and long-term gains or losses on the sale of capital assets. That's another complication of capital assets. So they've got a special tax rate. There are special rules with regard to how much you can take in, when you have a loss um, from sale of capital assets. Um, there are special rules for when you have, um, there are different rules for whether they are long-term or short-term capital gains and losses as well. So we're gonna, we'll look at, at that. This is probably as far as we're gonna get today um, into the, the capital assets part. Um, for Thursday, we're gonna look at how we recognize gain and loss on the sale of that business, those business assets otherwise known as 1231 business assets. And there are a couple of other specific provisions called 1245 and 1250 property that are under the 1231 umbrella. So we're gonna, there's some special rules with regard to 
that specific type of property out. Don't worry, I'll, we'll define it and we'll go through what those rules are. And then the last part of this, um, uh, special rules for different types of sales, stock sales, block stock sales, capital gain, gain distributions, mutual funds, worthless securities, and then sales of property that was received as a gift through inheritance. So we'll probably cover those for the most part on Thursday. We may still have some uh, things to talk about with regard to capital assets as well. This chapter can be a little tricky because a lot of these concepts are pretty foreign. Like, I mean, a lot of us can kind of relate to much of what we've talked about so far, maybe not as much with the, the business stuff. Maybe, maybe yes, maybe no. I mean, you've got enough financial accounting background that you're familiar with that. This is, this is kind of a little bit more obscure, although I shouldn't say obscure because these are rules that are used frequently. Businesses sell assets all the time, get rid of assets all the time. Individuals sell capital assets all the time. Um, so these are common, in these are common occurrences in tax but they may not be something that is easily relatable um, for students so just kind of be aware of of that maybe it is i don't know but um, i know for at least for me it's it's a little bit more obscure than some of the other stuff